When we brought this project from Miami to Wachula because of the beautiful surroundings and, and we're pretty much in a remote area, um, we had five young orangutans and chimpanzees. Kenya and Noel ran and hugged each other and then Grub ran over and all three hugged and they were so excited to have this environment. This project started with those five. Since then, we've grown to have over 40, 43 exactly right now. And we've grown from 15 acres to about 120 acres. Um, lots of new habitats and enclosures. We've grown, you know, more than we had expected to, but probably not enough because there are more out there that really need care. Accredited zoos won't take great apes often that have come from people's homes as pets or in the circus where they've maybe been used for years in the circus. Where they end up is often at roadside zoos, biomedical labs, research facilities. There still are over a thousand chimpanzees in research. So we took the chimp in and two pet owners, Roberta and Phil, took in two baby chimps years ago and they had the best of intentions. But after years of trying to provide for them, they realized that they were not equipped to deal with them as adults. We weren't going to be able to do this on our own. And I said, you know, this can't, this can't happen anymore. This is no good. People can't have chimps in their home. So as they realized this, they started contacting places for them. And we, after five years of trying to make room for them, we were able to build and accept them. People don't understand that they, they get so strong and they get so big and you really need to have a good permanent home for them where they're safe and happy. It's just the perfect place for them. They're going to have what we couldn't give them. They both adapted, I think, instantly. They both look and seem as if they're completely happy. We unfortunately have not everyone that we've been contacted about, and that's hard. You really do want to provide homes for as many as you can, but it is tremendously costly, and we have to protect the ones that are here. I've known Patty Reagan for quite some time, from the days when she first began with her interest in, in orphan apes. I've seen her develop over the years in the resources she was able to bring together to, to create the sanctuary and suffered with her through that terrible hurricane. Three hurricanes in six weeks. We lost most of our canopy, most of our shade. We actually figured that in the three hurricanes we lost over a thousand trees. People we didn't even know from all over the state came to help us clean up. It was a testing time, but we found out that we can withstand that, and we weathered those three hurricanes. Right after the hurricanes, we had an opportunity to suddenly expand because the largest user of great apes in entertainment, in movies, televisions, advertisements, agreed to leave the apes and entertainment business and stop working orangutans and chimpanzees permanently. We agreed to take all of his orangutans and chimpanzees, not only the breeders and the adults, but the young working infants. We had to build. We expanded tremendously to accommodate these 22 apes at once. One significant little fellow at the sanctuary was born six weeks before the trainer actually shipped his mother to Florida to the sanctuary. So he arrived on his mother's belly at six weeks old. He is the one grade eight at the sanctuary that will have been raised by his own mother. Even though they have the spaciousness of these 30 foot tall, either geodesic domed or the larger habitats, they have an elevated tunnel system so that they can actually get out and walk through the woods, follow the staff around, go and see who the other orangutans and the other groups, what they're doing. We started with just a few hundred feet and now we have over a mile. They have a choice. Good nutrition is very important. They get several produce feedings a day of fresh fruits and 
vegetables, they get fresh browse. We have 15 or 20 types of trees and plants that they love to eat, make nests with every day. We don't like the status quo. We have a new veterinary clinic that has been built um, with generous donations. Not only can we provide um, health care if we have an emergency or a situation comes up, we do routine health checks for preventative care and dental care and so forth. And the neat thing about the health clinic here is that because of our elevated tunnel system through the woods, the apes can actually walk to their doctor's appointment and they walk home to their own habitat. And that's kind of a unique situation. There's no loading them up in crates, there's no trucking them around to the hospital. They basically walk over, come into the facility and walk home from that again. In addition to the outdoor habitats that each different group has, they also have indoor night houses. They can go in at night or during rainstorms or even in cold weather. They're heated in the winter. Um, they have heavy duty cooling fans in the summer. Um, sometimes on nice nights they choose to stay out all night and they have that option too. Things like stretching and swinging. We also have an education program an opportunity for people to learn about these apes. Their intelligence, their abilities, their behavior, all of these things actually help people to care more about them and to want to protect them. We have an orangutan that came out of, in fact she was the last one in a research facility in the United States. When she was only 12 weeks old, she was with her mother at a research lab and her mother bit off her arms. Actually, she doesn't know what it's like to have arms to, to locomote around, but the amazing thing, orangutan's main way of locomotion is arm over arm swinging through trees. And because Mari doesn't have that locomotion, she has adapted to walking upright. Mari is amazing. Roger was born in captivity, and he was worked in the circus for quite a long time. And then he was sent to a small, kind of shopping center type of attraction where he was housed in a cage with an orangutan and he was very frightened of the orangutan. We brought them here and we brought the orangutan also and that orangutan is Radcliffe. He was born in a zoo and then they sold him to another small attraction and he lived in this 10 by 10 chain link cage for many years. When Radcliffe uh, first arrived, he had very little hair on his back and his legs, very little hair on his face. He was kind of bald. His color wasn't good. He looked a bit emaciated. He now has hair growing everywhere. He's a huge guy. He's about 260 pounds. And he just generally looks terrific. Knuckles is another little fellow that we took in. He was born in an entertainment compound in California and he would have been used in the movies, but they discovered early on when he was, after he was pulled from his mother, the trainer discovered that he had cerebral palsy. With the help of many dedicated volunteers that have our occupational therapists, that are physical therapists, that have worked with cerebral palsy people before. Um, they have come to help us with Knuckles and he's made tremendous progress. He loves being with the chimps. They are gentle with him, they groom him, they tickle him, they play with him. Grub tries to get him to chase him. Why spend this much time on a little chimpanzee that is definitely handicapped is that we believe he can live with chimpanzees. And he does have the same opportunity at a life and a full life as any other chimpanzee or any, any being. Where we are now with Knuckles is that he's growing, he's getting larger and stronger, he's made tremendous progress. Knuckles has a good future. Three new arrivals came to the sanctuary. They ended up in a garage in five by seven foot cages for over a decade. One of the orangutans, uh, 300 pounds, in a tiny little cage, that's Linus, and he was unable to stand up and walk because he'd been atrophied from sitting in that little box for so long. He had 15 to 20 pounds of rotting garbage and concrete hard feces matted in his hair. He couldn't even spread his fingers apart. He shook constantly when he tried to eat. And it took us about four days to get him to come out of the night house. This guy had not seen daylight or sunlight for over a decade. A couple of weeks after Linus first stepped outside and saw sunlight and daylight, it started to rain and most of the 
chimpanzees and orangutans at the sanctuary will run inside. Linus was inside when it started to rain. He ran outside and looked up and let that rain fall on his face. Here's a rainforest animal that has never felt rain before. And now, today, when it's raining, he stays out in the rain. I started this project to try and find a spot where these animals could live with their own species in spacious habitats with good nutrition and pretty much not have to be entertainers or um, biomedical subjects or cognitive research subjects, just be there to be orangutans or be chimpanzees. Great apes don't belong in captivity. They belong in the wild. Orangutans belong in the rainforest of Borneo and Sumatra. Chimpanzees belong in the wild of Africa. And what we are trying to do and what sanctuaries are trying to provide is the opportunity for these animals to have a place to retire to. They come out of situations where they don't have a future really. To live with their own species, to live in as spacious a habitat as can be afforded, to live with dignity for the rest of their lives. And that is what we're trying to do here.